Hello everyone, and thanks for tuning in to our session. My name is Peter Dürr, and I'm the director of Sony AI Zurich. Unfortunately, we cannot meet in person today as I'm joining you from my home in Switzerland, but I'm still looking forward to some interesting discussions. It's very exciting to be at ECCV this year because I think the work of this community in particular is essential for our mission at Sony AI to unleash human imagination and creativity with AI technology. With the availability of large data sets, with more computation power, with some algorithmic breakthroughs, and not least thanks to a focus on benchmarks and competitions, the computer vision community has seen an enormous progress over the last decade. For example, if we look at recognition, image classification performance in the ImageNet large-scale visual recognition competition has increased to a degree that is almost unbelievable to me. Now, of course, we can discuss the performance metric, we can discuss the relevance of this human performance line in the figure, but I think many people will agree that the computer vision community in the last decade has produced a large number of success stories, and many of them have ended in commercial products as well. The question now is, what's the next step? Where is the next success story? Now, as you've seen in the presentations by my two colleagues before, one direction we are following at Sony is to move the computer vision technology closer to the user, move the AI technology closer to the sensors. Products like this IMX500 image sensor, which features a stacked configuration where the logic sits just next to the pixels, will allow us to move AI algorithms onto the sensor itself. And this type of design can, for example, give us an image sensor that doesn't output image data, but actually metadata instead. This leads to a lower data volume, of course, it can give us better privacy, and potentially also much lower latency and much lower power consumption. Products like the vision sensing pro processor that was mentioned by my colleague Andreas before can bring even more compute power and allow for systems with many cameras. Another direction we are very interested in at Sony is to look closely at the temporal dynamics of computer vision. A conventional image sensor, as you may know, exposes all its pixels uh, for a certain time, it's called the exposure time, and during this time while the intensity is measured, basically the sensor is blind and it doesn't output any data. An event-based vision sensor, on the other hand, continuously exposes the pixel to the light and the pixels react to small changes in the intensity. Now, what you can see in this video, for example, on the left side, is a conventional video data that outputs or is based on frames at 60 Hz. In the center panel, you can see the output from an event-based sensor that shows the change events. So the uh, black points uh, represent uh, intensity becoming darker, the white points represent intensity becoming brighter. What we can do with such events is, for example, to reconstruct an HDR video just from the event data. And this reconstruction, we can update it basically with every incoming event. And as the events are, are uh, uh, arriving and they are tagged with timestamps uh, at microsecond resolution, this gives us a trem tremendous temporal resolution. Using the change events for reconstruction, however, is just the beginning. You can imagine there is a lot of potential for systems uh, that, for example, have a very low latency from photon hitting the sensor to an algorithm making a decision. The third direction that we are very interested in uh, at Sony is to use computer vision in embodied agents or robots. And as you may know, 
we have a history of robotics research that dates back to the early 1990s. We are now very interested to build the next generation of computer vision systems and systems that actually interact with the world and autonomously collect the data they need to improve. So we want to move away from the conventional large labeled data sets that are then uh, uh, used to train supervised learning algorithms and get to systems that can search the data themselves and improve in the environment where they operate. Now, Sony AI is a very new organization. We were just established in November 2019, but we do already have offices in Japan, in the US and in Europe. Our research is centered around what we call flagship projects and we are starting um, to work on three flagship, flagship projects currently, one in the area of gaming, one in the area of imaging and sensing, and one in the area of gastronomy. Talking about gastronomy, let's have a look at our robot preparing a plate of sushi. Who doesn't like Japanese food, by the way? Um, if this type of application or any of the topics that I mentioned before are interesting to you, then please consider to join Sony AI and help us unleash human imagination and creativity with AI technology. You can find our job openings on the webpage at ai.sony. And with that, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention. If you are planning to eat some sushi, if whether made by a robot or not, enjoy your meal. Otherwise, I will see you later at the discussion. Thank you very much.